Welcome to ClayshareCon 2024. Here we are on day four, the afternoon session. Oh yes, we're here. And we have a strong arm throwing demo with Carol and Mark, the inventor, well, the maker of strong arm. And here's part of mine, here's another part. And the rest of it's over on the wheel, but these are the arm parts that give you strong arms, right? So you can get all big pots. So you can get the big pots with the strong arm. Um, I have to tell you that I discovered strong arm a few years ago and it was right after I had carpal tunnel surgery. And I had gotten to the point where I could hardly even center five pounds of clay. Like that was not even possible for me. And when I had my carpal tunnel surgery, one of the things the surgeon told me is, you will not have pain anymore, which is a big, big thing, but you will never have the strength you had before either. So that meant throwing really large pieces were always gonna be a struggle for me. I thought maybe not even possible anymore, but I still had the surgery because pain-free, you know, we all wanna live our lives without pain. And then I discovered strong arm and this throwing aid, it's a tool, it doesn't do it for you. You still are doing the work, you're still the potter, you're still making the pots. This right here makes it so that if you have arthritis, if you just have joint pain, weakness, as we get older, we lose strength, carpal tunnel, other surgery issues, this can make a huge difference. Also, I am a 5'2", 105 pound woman. So I am strong, but I am still never gonna be able to throw like a 250 pound man. I just don't have that kind of body mass or strength. But with this, it levels the playing field. I can throw as big as I want. So that's enough chit chat for me. Let's go on over to Mark and Carol and see how they're doing and what they're gonna make and show for us today with the strong arm. Hey, Mark, hey, Carol. Hi. Hey, guys. So, so glad to have you here. Oh, we're it's excited to be here. Uh, we appreciate you bringing us back. Um, hats off on the studio, guys. Uh, it looks fabulous. Uh, we're really excited to be here today. Thank you, thank you. What you gonna, what, 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 you wanna tell us a bit about the strong arm and what you're gonna do with it today? Sure, well, we wanna get some action going because that's what it's about. So Carol's gonna throw a few. Uh, you know, this is the strong arm centering and opening tool uh, handcrafted by this guy. Um, Carol's been using this many years. Uh, we started, with this about 15 years ago, and I'll get into the bit of the history of this, but it's been a huge game changer for so many people. But I'm sure we're all excited to see it working, so I think uh, we're just gonna let Carol run with this, and we'll just kind of see how this goes. All right. Um, well, today I'm gonna actually start with a very small piece of clay. This is only a pound and a half. Um, just to show you, you can use this tool for big pieces and also small pieces. To get started, um, you basically just want to have your bat just barely moistened. And then you want to get your ball to play as close to the center as you can. And the other thing you want to do is make sure it's on there really good. So I do this little back and forth motion so it literally gets kind of vacuum sealed. Then you want to take one of your fingers, and you want to kind of seal the clay to the back. That'll just help because the force of this is pretty, pretty strong, way more than what you can force with your hands. So now with the speed going medium to fast speed, you're going to come into the clay and let the clay, let the paddle actually take care of the side of this ball of clay. The only thing that you're gonna to have to do now is use your thumb area here, this part of your hand there, to kind of just flatten the top. So the strong arm basically gives you the centered clay and your thumb and a little pressure there on the edge of the clay right here will make it flat and level on the top. And there it is, it's centered already. So now the yeah, next easy. thing, so is easy. This right, amazing, so amazing. Like it's like you can't even feel that you're exerting your muscles at all when you do this. It's just crazy. And then all I want to do is put a little divot in the top here. And then this is the opening finger, which is probably my favorite part of the tool. 
because I had a lot of difficulty trying to do that method of putting your thumbs down there and pulling it open or putting your fingers. Um, this makes it so easy. So this, you basically are pushing with your right arm. So this is the push down. And then your left hand can kind of loop over this area here as almost like a guide. So this is going to guide it so it stays on center. You can see it wants to wiggle back and forth, but just eyeball it. And if you're not getting a big curl of clay coming up, you know that you're pretty much dead center. So you just go all the way down to the base, move it to the left or the right. It really doesn't matter. Whatever feels good to you, bring it out and then clean this off in case it got a lot of clay on it, which happens in the beginning to get used to using this. So then you yeah, just a couple drops of water and then just pull to the left or the right, whichever way you, it feels better for you to do it really doesn't matter. And so now I've got a centered ball of clay ready to go. So I usually just go across the bottom of my sponge just to get any excess water out. And then I just move forward on pulling the walls. That's a quick route to the fun part. That's the fun part, right? So we have yeah, some we questions. Have... Do you oh, make okay. a left-handed version? Uh, I left am a left-hand. Yeah, I'm a left-handed thrower, but I do still use the wheel counterclockwise. But the thing with this tool for centering, you really it doesn't matter whether this clay is spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. It's this particular two steps of the of making a pot is the same no matter what. So um, we really don't make um, a left-handed tool unless someone really has some issues with using their right arm. It doesn't really matter which hand you favor. Um, it's, it's a whole different body mechanics way to throw a pot. Um, there's no smart or not so smart hand. Uh, there have been occasions where people have had, you know, uh, limited or no use where I, I have and will, but I say that just for, you know, serious physical needs, but uh, primarily always operates from the right. Okay, so there's one very simple, quickly thrown cup cylinder. Um, the next thing I want to do is throw a little bit bigger piece this time. So what wheels will this fit? Oh, yes, just about everything. Um, well, here's the deal. Uh, it's not just about the tool, it's about the service. And so I'm very happy to guide anyone through the process. Uh, we do have a compatibility chart, you know, on our website, but always call and ask. You're always welcome to uh, ask me. Literally, not really. I haven't been stumped yet. If you don't see it, I'll make one for you. And, uh, you know, there's so many hundreds, if not thousands of different sizes and shapes of wheels. So, in short, mm -hmm. virtually everything. Um, so, for like a tabletop, if someone has like an Artista tabletop wheel, uh, uh -huh. or... I was going uh -huh. to bring this on here. You want to show them? Uh, oh, show them. Oh. <laughs> this is something that I developed years ago with the intention of it was actually the main intention was for a, a wheelchair friendly, inexpensive, affordable version of a straw arm. And tabletop combo. This happens to be a shimpo. Uh, this works with the Artista as well. Uh, it's a great concept. Uh, the nice thing is, is you know, I supply this is called a flange bracket. It's not low, it's it's not listed on the website, but um, that's not an issue where you know we're we're working on adding it to it. But you can uh, attach this to your table or a platform like this, which is great. 
Uh, at the end of the day, there's just a, a way to hold this in place. That's the whole thing is that you need to unify the tool in the strong arm, which is what we've done here. Uh, simple installation. And when it's all said and done, you know, I just picked this up and put this here, but you can literally just, for, you know, say a small studio or somewhere where you want your table space again, you know, if you had a platform, you can just pick it up and put it on a shelf or put it out of your way. So, yeah. There's that. Pretty cool, right? Wonderful. Yeah, I know there's a lot of folks that have artistas. We're giving an artista away today. So they, that person might want to pick one of these up for their artista. It's good to know that they can. Or, if, or any tabletop. Yeah. And, yeah. and this, this is tried and tested. It's, it, this is not oh, yeah. a new thing whatsoever. It was just something that I had offered um, until I saw that, you know, people are big artista fans and love their tabletop wheels. So might as well bring this up into uh in front of everybody so yep. there you go all right okay so now um i teach a tuesday morning class here at uh, my school turk hill craft school and they're intermediate and advanced students so i'm always trying to come up with some fun challenging things and almost all of them are using the strong arm now we have them on uh, most of the wheels in the classroom but i came up with this is kind of a cute little thing this is a ikebana so it's like a flower arranger. So it, it's using the strong arm to open up kind of like a chip. If you do use more clay, you could make a chip and dip. We're just using, this is, uh, I think about two pounds. So this will make one a little bit bigger than that, but let's just go back to the whole centering thing. So got the clay on the wheel, got it sealed to the bat with my finger. And then I basically come in here with the paddle. Let the paddle do all the work for the side of the clay and my thumb and the muscle below your thumb is what's basically controlling the top and the edge. Now for so this someone, piece, I do need... Hmm, I, don't, I hate to stop you. If someone's having a lot of clay sticking to the paddle, would you suggest adding a little more water? Um, you could try that. Yeah, because I mean, I've just got basically slip on there. So they may be actually uh, getting some of the clay coming off. The, the ball of clay, maybe it's too wet. Also, yeah, that's, that's a big one. And, you know, as you're becoming, and there's so much more to it than uh, physical challenges. I'd like to address some of that. But as you're being challenged physically to throw a pot, what do you do? You start going towards softer and softer clay, which is sticky. It's not as floppy. It. It's, uh, you know, now that you have this tool, and the tool is actually you know, it's taking the brunt of the force from the clay. Dryer clay is now your friend, which has a ton of benefits. But yeah, and you know, you can use water as well, but uh, it, it just might be that the clay is just a little too wet, which uh, that can be a part of it. Okay, so I need to lower this down. I mean, it's one of those things like if you're making a plate form or a low bowl, this clay has to get pushed down. So. Um, right from the beginning, I'm trying not to like push this in and bring it way up into a tall cone, kind of lower it down. So to do that, you just sort of press down with your thumb, add a little force, and then the paddle is still on the outside, keeping that level. Okay, so that's good. So now what I want to do is I know I want to leave a cup in the center. So I'm actually going to start opening this right about here. Yeah, I made that. Add a little water in there. Go down. Mm -hmm. Move this out. We'll work on that later. And now I want to go down in the center of this little cup I made. Notice how I'm cleaning this off so I get a better opening. Mm 
Yeah, it's been fun. I've discovered a couple of fun little things that you can use the strong arm for and certain pottery designs that I hadn't thought of before. But now I just have to go in here and open up this little cup. That is cool. And then I can come out here and just bring this little edge up. So no straining on your fingers or wrists. So, exactly. you know, if yeah. it, it's just a tool to help you do the job, to help you make the pot. It, it does, but it's, it's like so much fun to do this. And uh, especially fun when you're in a class situation and you have a lot of students that could only get to maybe four or five pounds and it takes them 20 minutes to center it. And um, so I have students just kind of giddy this past semester because they're able to finally get beyond that, like six, eight pounds of clay. And it's fun. I mean, it's just you have so much fun. So now you can spend more time coming up with the fun ideas of things to try and spend more time on, you know, the decoration and different things like that. And I know for me, sometimes I'll be throwing and I'll, you know, sometimes you'll catch your finger when you're doing a double walled form and then you'll mess up yes. part of it and then you'll start all yeah. over. With this, you won't yep. catch your finger and right. mess up any of the double walled parts. Yeah, I think last year I, I did a chip and dip and, um, and I had a lot yes, of response from people saying right. they love making chip and dips like that. Right. This is so just kind of a fun, fun little flower arranger. And I think, you know, a lot of people uh, think they can't make chicken chip and dips or they right. just yeah. are like, oh, I got to make one. I don't want to. And you have the sense of dread. Yeah. But this takes that sense of dread away. Even if you can do it and you don't have any problems with your wrists or your hands or strength, this just can make it so much easier to do the job. Now, the strong arms, yeah. both the parts, the opener and the paddle and the bracket to attach it to your wheel. Um, or if you have a freestanding wheel, maybe there's other parts. So it's everything right. you need to use the strong arm when you buy it. And Mark walks you through it. He'll contact you personally um, to make sure you're getting the right strong arm for your wheel. I know when I right. got my strong arm, Mark, uh, we FaceTimed and he walked us through installing it piece by piece. And I see so many other people. He did this same service for them. So if you have any questions. You know, he will happily answer them. This uh, is true. The, the importance of the whole experience, it's not an experience um, right from the beginning. And, you know, you guys were asking about some of the directions you love. You know, we can't make all these. This is for a Bailey. Um, these are one of the choices that you'll have to make. You know, here's one that attaches to the floor. Um, and you know, in some circumstance, there'll be a wheel um, that, for some reason, you know, every potter has their setup, and um, you know, I can FaceTime and we may need a, 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 a nice quick conversation, and I always enjoy that and a few measurements. But you know, that's how all of these things came about. This is for the leg mount with many types of wheels. Um, the tabletop one is also great, not only for the, uh, you know, like the artista wheel, but I see a lot of guys building uh, cool, you know, kind of workstations around the wheels. And then they go, well, how, how can I make a strong arm work with this? I want the ultimate setup. And, you know, the, the same one I just showed you for the smaller wheel also can come into play. But this is how I learn about you guys and what you do. And um, and also how to do what I do better by doing this. And yeah, I'm always happy to take the time to help you pick one, get started, and get set up. Um, that's a huge bonus to this. I want every part of this tool and your experience to be a happy one. So when you walk up, there you go. Man, I just I just love this stronger. That is our only <laughs> goal: one potter at a time. It's true. It's so true. Folks were asking how deep can they set the opener? Like how, what can they adjust it to? All right. Um, so basically the way I usually do it is I take this and then I decide like, am I going to do a, an elaborate tall foot or do I just want something where I'm just going to pull a wire and call it good? So this is where you want to just basically like usually for me, it's just a, like my finger. I usually put my finger underneath it and that's a good height for me. 
What you have to remember though, is when you do go to open this, you'll notice that this is a hinge. So when the hinge closes, don't push any further because you can kind of tilt this a little bit. So then I you're think people your do bottom. push too further. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. You know, so you remember there's that hinge. You go to the hinge. If you yeah. keep pressing as as down, you will to go the hinge, deeper. You're done. Yeah. Yep. So you've got to be mindful so, of that. Yeah. Yeah. This to me is fantastic because I was notorious for always, especially big pieces you spend a lot of time on. Then you go to pull the wire and all of a sudden you see the wire coming up closer to closer to the edge. And it's like, oh no, I'm going to lose it. So this, the opening finger is fantastic. Takes a little bit of, um, you know, figuring out exactly where's the sweet spot so you don't get that little curl of clay coming up. But um, I always tell new new owners of the strong arm, wedge up maybe eight balls of, you know, maybe a pound to three pounds of clay and just do them over and over and over. And by the time you've got through eight balls of clay, you've really got it figured out. So, well, you know, there's. There is some learning and unlearning to do. I mean, especially if you're used to doing things, you know, the conventional way. You're used to using a lot of force, a lot of strength, and pushing hard on the clay, pushing against the clay. Well, so many of these factors you don't have to do now, which uh, it's kind of it's it's almost too easy. People go, I think I need to do more, but there's this is too easy and. It is, that's just it. You know, that's that's what the tool is really about. And there is a sweet spot that, you know, each potter will find some immediately, some it takes a couple tries, but it has everything to do with the RPMs that the wheel is turning and the amount of pressure that you're putting and it's sideways on the clay. Also, with the drilling process with the opening tool, um, once you get it, the light bulb goes off. It literally will become second nature. That's just it. After a little while with this tool, you're not even thinking really about use, using the tool, the use of the tool. You think about what you're going to make. It becomes, it's just like driving. You don't really think about driving. You're thinking about where you're going. And very same thing. This just becomes a second nature one, two, and then go. And at the end, um, when I do the outro, I'll share the first pot I made with the strong arm after we hooked it up after carpal tunnel surgery. Oh, cool. I threw 12 pounds, 12 pounds of clay. I still have it. And Mark, I am going to send it to you. I just haven't glazed it. So I'm waiting. I'm still thinking up the glaze combo, but that is yours. It's got your name on well, it. But, awesome. I mean, you can first time you use it, throw, I threw 12 pounds and I'd had carpal tunnel surgery. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing. I remember that day. I remember we were, that. Yeah, we were we were FaceTiming with you. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think I could do it. I thought, yeah, I'll hook this up. I'll put some clay on and, you know, and you're like, no, no, make some pots. And I did. <laughs> and, you know, we went good, big, bigger and big, which was awesome. And it was, you know, all in a session and it was quick. I love watching that. You know, that's, that's part of the perks of this is, Watching people succeed, that's really, the empowerment of this is awesome. And, you know, some of it boils down to, and, and this is another thing that really consider, you know, physical ailments, uh, some people have injuries, um, overuse, which is really, you know, for Carol, that was the beginning of this is, you know, we did shows for 25 years. It's thousands and thousands of pots. And, she started to wear them. Just preserving careers is, I don't know. It's, it's things that you, you can't measure the feeling that you get when you see that happen. Um, but the other one is, is, and think about this, like, you know, we wanted to try to focus on why is this fun? Well, then you, you can do some like big stuff and it's, it's easy and you got all this time to, you know, uh, have your fun, play with it, shape it, you know. Also, the clay is going to be in much better condition. It's going to be firmer. It's going to dry quicker so you can get to your, you know, your leather hard and do your trimming. Uh, so many pluses. Uh, but, yeah, uh, the stories that I have gotten over the years are incredible.
priceless. And that is, you know, that's why I said a million times, you know, I truly love my job. I can honestly say that. Uh, it's not easy what I do, how to make these. <clears throat> a lot of hours, a lot of hard work, but you know what? I love it. It's, it's, Oh, and we can tell, perfect. we can tell you love it. The customer service, the care that you put into it, plus the craftsmanship and the tool. How many pounds, Carol, is that that you're working with right now? Um, this one's about three pounds. So still, you can do small things. You don't have to do big things. So that's the beauty of it. Um, yeah, I mean, you can work from as small as like a pound all the way up to, you know, as much as you can handle. Yeah. Like this this uh, tool, like 20 pounds if you're doing like a low, wide plate. And yeah, there, <clears throat> there are ways to go even bigger still. Uh, sometimes there's modifications I can make to the tool, but if 20 is a really respectful size pop. I'm sorry, I, I lost this, but I'm gonna keep winging it with you guys. I don't care. And again. So just think about the time frame here. One, two, three. And we're still going. And the best part is um, I really don't feel tired at all. I'm just, you know, it's literally the centering and opening that is really very exhausting in your body. That's what I discovered when I first started using this tool uh, for my production work. I could do twice as much in like a third of the time. So it was, it was wonderful. So we had a question. Is it easier to throw with the strong arm standing up or sitting down? You have to repeat these things. Yeah, you, well, you notice yeah. that um, yeah, for, whether you can stand or sit. Um, I sat for many years and really kind of ruined my back doing that. Um, so I think when I was in my early 40s, I, I decided to put my wheel up on legs, and I've been doing it like ever since, and it's been great. So it's really your personal preference. If you like to sit and throw, it'll work yeah. Uh, yeah. just as well as I, if you stand. Yeah. So the ease of the use is the same. Yeah. yeah. They're all sit down, yeah. yeah. They're all sit down wheels in the classroom, but my studio, I have two standing wheels. So any other questions? I can throw another pot, but if there's yeah, some more pe people that, would then. love to see you throw um, throw some more pots. That's you know people. Yeah, you want to get into the big boys now? Yeah, a little bigger. Okay. I keep going a little bigger and bigger. Well, while she's working up to that, here's a uh, here's a little something. This is my best analogy comparison of this is the riot. Yeah. Okay. Old school, new school. You know, end result is still the same. I don't know if they can hear you. Uh, but, Mark, your you front know, camera froze is, up, so we're going to use the side. What's that? The front camera froze up, so we only have side view. So we'll just go with that. Carol, I don't know your passcode. Uh oh, <laughs> now you have to give them your passcode. So uh, we had a question. People love the wooden bats you're using. I know this isn't about bats, but. Um, One of you needs to come over here because I can't do this. Okay. Mark, can talk, talk about your. Talk about. Okay. Sure, right? Two, three, two, six, zero, zero. There's one word there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, we're good. All right, yeah. okay. We got front back, yay! All right, guys. Anyway, we're better at making tools than we are with this stuff. All right, so I'm a woodworker. I could use this to get my piece of wood started and rough and ready to do the fun stuff. A lot of work, a lot of time. How much time does it take? How many fewer pieces can I make? This would represent conventional throwing by hand. I like this. This gets it done. It done <laughs> also gives me plenty of energy to get onto the 
you know, really refining and making a better end piece. So that's the best comparison I can make as far as being a woodworker to a potter and a straw and arm to using your bare hands. Okay. All right, so I have about four pounds of clay in here. So I've got it on the wheel head. I've used my finger to seal the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do is show you a little This is a piece of PVC pipe, okay? Uh, these have been all machined by Mark by hand, but he's made it so a PVC pipe of what size? That's one and a half inch PVC right. plumbing pipe. This fits. This will fit right over the handle. So we think. Yeah. Carol, do you wedge your clay? That was a question that came in. Um, if it's brand new clay, I really only get it into the like mound shape that I'm going after. So a little bit of wedging just to get it softened up enough to put it into a nice mound with a flat bottom. Once I, I sort of go for a ball and then sort of tap it down on the wedging table, and then that's how I start these out. So you're not fighting it from the get-go. So because if you got a piece that's like square on one side and you know wonky on the other side, it's just gonna kind of be like uh, 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 trying to get it centered. This way, if it's more of a mound, you're not fighting it so much. Just, just make it easy on yourself. Little to no wedging. And there's yeah. there's no it's not necessary to go up and down. It's a one-step process. It's basically center open and go so with the pvc pipe instantly instead of hanging on here the leverage that you get here is a great deal more the further out on this pipe that you go so here's an example of it so you can even like with this i usually stand so it's near my hip it's really good when you're going big so you can see the side is pretty much already centered and I just have to work on the top. And here's another little trick. You can even use this, like hang on to it like a rolling pin and just press down on the center. And then of course you have to go back in and get this recentered with the rest of the clay. So you may have to do that a couple of times on a bigger piece. So the more aggressive you are, Centering, the more the top's going to want to lift and get unruly. So, for the bigger pieces, you're going to have to put a little more effort into it. But the pipe is really nice to just kind of get yourself back to close and then just give it a quick little finishing touch with the plate. And now you're ready to go again and get to the opening part. So, now I'm going to try to go after a little bit taller cylinder with this one. A base form. This was about four, I think, four pounds of clay. So you got to do the finger thing? Yeah. Yeah. Little finger thing. A little one piece on the top. Okay. okay, so get this lined up. Remember, you push down with your right hand, you sort of steer this with your left. A little water there. And you'll notice this is actually a fulcrum. So it seems like it's going in too far out, but trust me, once it gets down, it's gonna be perfectly in the middle. I can see a little bit of clay getting peeled off. So it's off a little bit getting it down there. Let me get that out of there. And a lot of that comes down to, well, being live on TV. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, it comes down to the amount of pressure. If you're gentle enough and you let the tool do the work, um, you'll have easier time doing things like opening and then the center end as well. It's, yes. it's pressure and RPMs and letting the tool do the work for you. So now I'm going to start moving this out. And all I, you always want to kind of control this top edge, put a little compression on it with the thumb. So you can even like ride along with the finger that's a to great, bring it open. Yeah, that's a great pointer right there. Right. So okay, so here's a little thing. Let's see if this will work out. 
this help knowing that you're live on the conference. But um, so here's the thing: so if I'm trying to go for a cylinder, right? That's my tall cylinder. Um, I could stop now and use my fingers to lift. But we actually saw another person had done this, and we saw a video of them doing it. It was like a eureka moment, like, oh, look at that. So just on the opposite <laughs> side. We got to do it up here. Sorry. Sorry about that. Start here and just push against that finger and just work it up. Start in. Oh. A here. One of my very good friends, uh, he's a one arm potter, and we've had to learn from each other on how to uh, uh, utilize the strong arm for his circumstance. And that was one of the big ones that uh, we learned, he learned, is that he can use this to then raise the pot since he doesn't have. And he's in the back pot up. So he is using his finger to actually lift his walls. Uh, pretty cool thing. Yeah, it's amazing to watch him work and then to see his finished products because it's amazing. He can actually throw pretty large pieces of clay. Uh, a lot of it's with the help of what Mark has adapted this tool for him. He's over in uh, Cornwall, England. And uh, just an inspiration to all of us potters. Making a living, throwing pots. Uh, check him out. He is the one armed potter. Uh, that's what the he one armed for. potter. Okay. One armed potter, Cornwall, England. Back to those awesome stories that make this all worthwhile, and then so there's one. I made a great friend, and uh, I love what he's doing. I'm blown away. Yeah, yeah. Even a couple of years ago, we we flew over to uh, England and visited him in Cornwall, and I gave him a couple of days lessons, personal uh, lessons, personal lesson to help him adapt to this, that tool that we, we sent it over, and then we brought a few little extra pieces with us. Um, yeah, it was amazing. It's such a great time. So, will you ship? So, you ship outside of the U.S. So, if somebody purchases one of these oh, and they're goodness. not in the United States, you will send it international. Yes, absolutely. And then, the, oh my gosh, probably about 30 countries so far. Uh, yeah. yeah. Internationally, um, uh, here's the thing if you don't see the country for you um, on, on the web page, we can set it up so that you can do so. Really, with anything and everything about this tool, the, the big thing, the most important thing is please contact us. Um, you know, I want and we want every buyer that would like to use a strong arm to have one. And we will go to whatever place possible to get one to you. So we had a question. Will strong arm be at the clay Golgong in Australia in April? You're gonna be there. <laughs> we will not be there, but I'll tell you what, Australia is the most popular country for buying strong arms. We have a lot of members in Australia. We have, he, this here for our Aussie members, we have a lot of Clay Share members in Australia. Do you? Yeah, it's, it's a, amazing. It's a ton, yeah. One week, um, in one week. Yeah, yeah. The, we have a huge Australian contingent. We need to do Clay Share down under. We need to do something down there. And Strong Arm needs to come with us. We'll go. We need to set something up for our Australia friends. Let's do something. For sure. That's another big gift is, uh, you know, that's the thing. Nobody likes customer service. Uh, I love it when it's one and done, but I love customer service. Um, you know, I've gotten to, to chat, FaceTime people from all different countries and cultures and uh, learn about them. And what a great experience. You know, it, it's just been a blast. And it's, it's really been a great vehicle to see what potters are doing all over the world. I mean, so many brilliant, gifted people. Um, 
we have so many people um, sharing their testimonials about how the strong arm has changed their life. We have a uh, Cindy said she's been using it for 15 years. She's 74 years old now. She doesn't have carpal tunnel or any hand problems at all from throwing. And she is sure this is why, because she uses the strong arm. Like it has helped keep her hands in great shape so she can keep making pots. Uh, yeah, we, have, we, we get a lot of them too. Um, sometimes we'll have a person that will reach out to Mark and Mark will spend a lot of time going through his mechanics 101, which he's going to do here today. We'll probably get started quickly here on that. Yeah. Um, so but, we have a um, question. Yeah, yeah, finish and then I'll, answer, I'll ask the question. Yeah, and uh, people, after talking to Mark, next thing you know, they're able to make uh, the sudden videos of what they've made just because Mark has helped them figure out to get past the learning curve of the tool. I mean, it's well, just one, yeah. it's, it's a very simple thing, but it's a life-changing thing. And especially when you think you can't do it anymore, something you love to do, uh, or, or even if you're just struggling to do more of it. Um, folks are asking, are you going to be at Inseca in Richmond next month? Uh, we are not going to be there this year. No, no, no. So your best chance to get one is here now because we have a discount. So, and there's only a limited number. That's right. Yeah, so sure. We still do have some of those left. Man, we, we went all in and then some for this. And yeah, we do have some, but there is a limit. Um, so yeah, get yours while you can. Uh, and, and this year you did a discount for everybody and one yes, just for premium members. And yeah. we shared the discount for everybody on Claysharecon.com, and Kevin can share that link for the public one. But premium members of ClayShare, your discount code is on ClayShare.com under forums. It's also on ClayShare Prime, the private social media network, under, uh, do you have that under documents, Kev? Yeah. yeah. It's in the discount section. Okay. So that's yeah. just for the premium members. Uh -huh. And it is a limited number, though. So if you're thinking of getting one, now is the time. This, th this is it. And this is true. I do not have a surplus. We are hand making it. So, you know, it's uh, they're here. Each, and then yeah, they're, each one is made for you. So, uh, when you place your order, then Mark will reach out and find out what one to be sure that's the correct one for you. And it'll be yours. Like, it's made for you. Yes. And keep in mind, it's a lifetime tool. There's nothing to wear out, nothing to break. Um, say, oh, here's one, uh, you know, also just uh, an extra bracket. Uh, so you've got a couple different wheels, and you know, you want to use one with a strong arm. You don't have to buy the whole strong arm, you buy the tool, and I gladly will send you another bracket um, if, if you choose to order one. The other one is, say, you, you move on to a different type of wheel. We will trade that for you to keep you going with your strong arm on your new machine. It's important that you're happy with the tool and you're using it. That is paramount um, with what we do. So, um, unfortunately, I can't I can't hear the commentary, but I want to do the mechanics one on one real quick. It's kind of a getting started thing. We're going to add more YouTube videos, but just from the beginning, Carol mentioned, you know, light wedging, if any. The biggest one is to make the clay round and get that flat part on. You know, if you have a, a ball with an undercut, it's not your friend because you have to bring your centering panel in farther and farther, which will then make it uh, more difficult to then open it and limits the base of your clay. Here's a cool thing I learned. When your bats are clean, and uh, I'm not going to be throwing, I'm just doing a that way you're not focusing on the pot. When these are clean and dry, this is a great bullseye. Just a couple of these with a Sharpie. And, you know, this is a big area to try to visualize dead center. The closer you are, the better. The rounder you are, the better. That's just, you know, anytime you're closer to your, your finished shape, you know, it's just easier and faster. Now, the unspoken word here is when you watch the demonstrations, it looks as if in your ergonomics of your body also will be involved in this. It looks as if you're pushing down. You are not pushing down on this whatsoever. You're just firmly holding it in place. 
This hand looks like you're shoving it into the plate. You are not doing that. This hand is just controlling the top. This is just, this is your guide here to just steadily move sideways. Now, the clay, obviously, you want to start a little bit slower, but the clay not being round is, you know, what it really comes down to is, and everybody has their own techniques, but it's resisting the bump of the uncentered clay. As you go faster and you start slow, that bump, every RPM is going to get a little bit less, a little bit less. Just continue to add pressure as you go. Remember, have faith in the tool. Another one is you don't need to watch what you're doing. Now your back's out of, you know, bad value mechanics. Trust your feel of your hand. Watch the paddle. If the paddle is not moving and you don't feel a bump, you're done. That's it. Boom. Done. The other one is this. Uh, now you're going to get into the, the opening part of it. Carol, so we got about a hands. minute this is where we're a little we're, uh, So one. we are... We've got about 30 seconds left. Yeah, then we got 30 seconds. 30 seconds? You got 30, wrap it all up. Do it all in 30 seconds. <laughs> I can do this with you guys personally when you get your stronger. That's so right. Absolutely. It goes fast, doesn't it? It does, it goes so fast, you know. We will have you back on to join us just for a Wednesday broadcast where we have a full hour and then you can take your time. So let's, let's do something um, late spring, early summer. We'll get you back. Right. And that way people will have questions. Those of you who haven't got one yet can learn more about it. And if you've got one, you can learn more about it then even more. So, all right, guys, Mark, how should people reach you? Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Have to go to markspotterytools.com or stronger sure. centering tools, either or. Okay, fabulous. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Mark, All so right. much for being with us again this All year right. for ClayShareCon. Take Bye. care. Be Bye. well. Bye. Bye. Okay, so this will change your life. I know, it's amazing. And people are asking how easy it is to, to take on and off if you've got to take it off your wheel. They just lift up. There's, I just lifted this off. And, and you can see, I can carry these around. They're not super heavy. So you can just lift them up and they don't have to be on your wheel all the time. The bracket stays on your wheel, but the strong arm tool can come right off. Now I have this pot that I've promised to mark. I haven't finished it, it's bisque, so it has shrunk. It dried and it was bisque fired. So it's 12 pounds of clay, but it doesn't weigh 12 pounds anymore because it's dried and been bisque fired. And this is B-Mix, which shrinks, what, 14%? So it's already shrunk quite a bit. But this is the first thing I threw, this pot right here, after having carpal tunnel surgery with this tool. And it, it sits here, and I am gonna send it to Mark, but I've I sort of been holding on to it a little bit because it, it rem, I reminds me of the confidence that I got back, that I didn't think I'd be able to have again from the strong arm. So it's something to think about. I, I definitely, love that I have one. And um, like he said, you can get separate brackets. So I have a wheel for porcelain clay and a wheel for stoneware clay. I can just clean this off and move it from wheel to wheel. I don't need a whole new everything. All I need is the new bracket and you can get those if you have multiple wheels. Um, maybe you're teaching in a studio and you know, you want to put it, the brackets on multiple wheels, but the strong arm in others. So anyhow, I have videos on using the strong arm. You can go back and watch Clay Share Con from previous years when Mark and Carol were with us and the demos they did then, the chip and dip and everything. And go check out them on YouTube. And um, I don't know, I think the, the strong arm is an investment worth it for yourself. So, all right, gonna take a little break and we're gonna be back with fire. We got Raku coming up with Michael Harbridge. So come back and join us and